adjust the baby for the first time. And, that, and the baby is two days old. And she was sobbing uncontrollably because her, grand, her first grandchild was able to get adjusted. Now, you, you know, if I was in the audience listening to the story like you, I would be going, I adjust newborns all the time. What's the deal? Well, the deal is, is that we forget. We forget what it is that we get to do with our hands. We forget that we turn on life in people. We, we, we forget that we're giving people a choice to live from inside out rather than from outside in. And as, the, as they cried, and you know I cried the most. It's a gift I have. My children, I can't go to a wrestling mat. My kids are wrestlers. I, I, I cry for the other kid. I, I cry. <laughs> I, I'm sobbing because this healthy baby got his first adjustment and was cleared at two days old. Can you, can you celebrate that? I could celebrate that. And as I get older, I find that, and it's a gift, and a few of us have been hanging out that, that are in practice 30 some odd years, so it makes us, you know, 37 years old or 39 years old, that, that I have the gift now, and I, you know, of living in the moment. So when I'm adjusting a baby, that's all that exists in the entire world is what is in front of me. You could say, oh, well, you know, you're, you're more forgetful. I'm more focused. When I'm with you, the building can burn down. And I wouldn't even notice because I'm with you. And as I get older, I become more of a human being rather than a human doing. I thought it was a contest to see how, how, fast, how fast I can make my first million or how fast I can see 100 patients a day or how, you know. Now it ain't about that. Now it's about how it feels to be with you and what change how I can, you know, we, when we first come to seminars and we, we hang out at chiropractic schools, we walk around with a straw because we, we want, we want, we, we're coming from lack and we want to suck it all in. We want more of it. And then at some magical moment, we, the, we, we, we become from the student, we turn from being the student to the teacher. Like I did with my CA Dawn the other day who, who, who is now the leader of the Pocono chapter of the LCW. You learn from doing, but you learn from giving back because because that's, that's the natural progression of things. Like Dr. Edwin was talking about how he was in practice and he asked God to use him more. And that, that's what happens, is that the, that the better you get at that level, then you're ready for the next level. And the things that turn you on change, but you gotta look for them. And you gotta, you, you know, I, and every, every day I don't leave my, my bed without writing that five things to be grateful for. I'm always focusing on what I want more of. I want more love in my life, so I love more. I, I want more healing in my life, so I heal more. I, I keep seeing it and I keep on enjoying it. I, I, we were talking about past associates. And, you know, they say you learn a lot from your kids. I've learned a lot from my past associates. And one of my favorites, and a lot of you know her because she spoke here, is Jenna Bobshever. And Jenna would get so excited about everything. Like those of you know, and now you watch her on Facebook. I mean, she's an explosion of happiness most days. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and uh, one time, I, uh, she loved the she loves the '80s music. I think she was born in the 80s. But anyway, <laughs> she loved the band Sticks, and they were doing an outdoor concert. She was my associate. I, I like, surprised her, and I got tickets to go see Sticks. But I got them like months before the concert. And every day, the first thing she'd say when I'd walk in, and we'd be doing our huddle with the staff, and she'd be going, we're going to go see Sticks. I'm like, we're going to see Sticks in two months. Shut up. You know, <laughs> like every Friday we had to like, you know, I got these old patients coming and sticks is like blasting on my speakers, you know. It was sticks on Friday because we were all psyched about this concert. And I, and I, <laughs> I thought it was ridiculous. And then I got it. Like that is it. That is it. You, you bring the, she brought the excitement to that sticks concert. <laughs> Those tickets, I, I, they were worth it. Two weeks before the concert, they already were worth If we didn't go to the concert, for all the enjoyment we got out of the sticks concert. Get it? You bring it to it. Most people know that if you eat right exercise and take Geritol, 
<laughs> and get adjusted, you're going to be okay, right? People know that, but like, like we know if we go to the gym, it'd probably be better for us, right? But how many of us go? It's who brings the excitement? Who makes it real? Just recently, I was telling somebody about this yesterday. I, I, steal this off, I stole this off of Facebook, but it's a great idea. You know, if you tell a patient, you know, if the patient hears you have cancer, you know, it's like, oh, you know, it's like the whole family gets involved and it's all about that. When you tell somebody they have subluxation, they're like, I got a submarine? <laughs> so we started doing bulletin boards, a bone of the month. <laughs> Catch this, you always start with C1. So, you get, so we got, we got a picture of the atlas, then we got the organs that are controlled, and you know, with the computer now, you can just start printing stuff, and then, then you know, like the Merck definition of where, you know, what's affected with that subluxation, and then we have a handout that goes with it. And so then when the patients come out over to the adjusting area, they look up and they go, would you check my atlas? And then, I, then you know, they go, you know, my son's home with ADD, you think maybe his atlas is out? Like, having an atlas subluxation is really bad. You're the one that makes it real for them. You're the one that brings this principle to life. And how many times can you tell them about PJ and TD? They don't care about that. What do they care about? They want to know if you can help them. They want to know that you care about them. And that you believe in what you're doing. Because I got news for you, when they, you know, the two, two cells came together late on a sh uh, Saturday night in the back of a Chevy, <laughs> and then nine months, it was a beautiful miracle that came out with ten fingers and ten toes, and the first time that baby sneezed, the mother gave him an aspirin, right, or gave him something for the fever, because the mother's smarter than the body knowing that it needed that fever. The mother didn't give him the aspirin because she didn't love him. She gave him the aspen because she did love him. And you're coming through with this principle that says fevers are good and that, that the body heals from inside out. And if you alienate her, she ain't going to listen to you because she is convinced that her mother gave it to her because she loved her. So it, it takes a, a long time in practice. When we first get out, we're just right and they're all wrong. The trick is to make them feel they're right and you're right too. And then when they go home and they fetch their kids and bring them in, even though their mother never got them adjusted, that they're doing the best thing they can for that child by getting them checked for subluxation. So sometimes people would tell me about what the doctor said or what, you know, how they want to go about it, and, and, and I see myself going like this. Now I hold myself back, and I smile. And I bring them closer to me. Because everything you say to somebody is either going to bring them closer to you or it's going to push them away from you. I want to bring them closer to you because I, me, I got, a, I got an ulterior motive. From the minute they walk in the door, and they don't really know this because most of them come in with low back pain, right? But my motive is to take care of them for the rest of their lives. Patient says to me, how much longer do I have to keep coming? I always say, depends which one of us dies first. But I don't say that on the first visit, because that doesn't make sense. I link arms with them, and I love them into seeing a new way of life and a new way of living. So I live in the moment. I live in gratitude. And another big one, huge, is forgiveness. I used to hold grudges. I used to, you know, I used to take, I, I used to judge, and I used to, you know, take, uh, take, you know, he did this to me, she did this to me. I, well, I did this, but she deserved that because she did that. I got no time for that, man. I got, I got way no time for that. There's a, a, a woman that, that uh, took one of my practices years and years ago, and she's kind of in a bad way now. And, she's kind of, and so I hadn't talked to her for many years, and she's kind of come back in my life because she needs help. And she needs love, and, she knew, and, and she's in pain, and she knew when, when she first came to me that, that that's what she got from being around me. And, and, and some of my friends, when they see that, that she's around me, they're like, what are you doing? And, I, and, I, and you know what? I can't not love her. You know, it's, only, it's, like, if you, you know, it's like if you love people, you just got to love people. You can't not. 
Because if I stop, if I if I stop loving her, I'll have to stop loving somebody else. Because I, because I am love, I am chiropractic. That's what I say in the morning when I meditate. I'm an expression of innate. I'm good. I'm good enough. And I have no time to take, you know, I have no time to judge people. I used to, you know, we get out of school and, and it was the Mercedes 80, so the more things you put on your claim form, the more insurance page, and people think you're stupid if you didn't. Sorry. <laughs> people think you're stupid if you didn't. And I, we used to say, oh, well, they see X amount of patients a day and they make more money than, I got no time for that. Life is too short, man. Sigafoo's taught me that any day that you live, that you didn't do what you wanted in that day, at the end of the day, you're still short a day. How do you want to spend your days? How do you want to spend your moments? I'm looking to make a difference. I'm looking to be in the light. And I can't be in the light and in the darkness at the same time. I can't be faith, in faith and fear at the same time. Our chiropractic principle tells us that when we adjust somebody, the power that made a body will heal their body from above down, inside out. The, 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 to be a chiropractor, to be a principle of a chiropractor, to live a chiropractic life is to know that that's where the healing comes from. It comes from above down, inside out. And, then, and to respect the hunch, to build that muscle. I listen to innate. I listen, you know, I, I pray, but I also listen to what that voice tells me because if I don't listen, I, I stop hearing it. Just like my baby knew to go to my breast, my, I got it. <laughs> He's a spinner. He's a science spinner back there. <laughs> Just like my baby knows to go to my breast, so I've learned to listen to that voice inside. Because if I don't listen to that voice inside that tells me that I am the light and I am good and I am good enough, then I'm gonna look for people outside of me to tell me that. And that's very destructive to have to have somebody else to tell me that I'm okay. So that comes from above, down, inside out. That comes through me. I, I might be losing some of the chiropractic students here. But here's what I like to tell the chiropractic students. Keep it simple. This principle is so simple. You, you know, they were talking about techniques and all. Keep it simple. You've got to be a good adjuster. You've got to pass your boards. You've got to do all that. And you've got to have your office procedure. But the goal of all that is the, that when you're with somebody, you are with somebody. You got it? And, when you, and this message that we have, you think you know, that chiropractic isn't enough? Chiropractic is more than you ever know. You know I tell people I'm, I'm happier to be in practice today than the day I, I got out of school, and they say, how, how can you say that? And I, I say, because I knew of a couple of chi chiropractic miracles when I was in school or that happened to me. So I, I kind of believed in chiropractic. Now I know it to be true. I don't believe in chiropractic. Patients say, oh yeah, I believe in chiropractic. I always say it's not a religion, right? This isn't a religion. This is a principle. Like Dr. Sid said, you drop the keys, they fall down. You remove a subluxation, the person's life is enhanced, not only theirs, but probably their children and their grandchildren because genetically you're increasing the pool. When you open that up and you let that power express through itself, don't try to overcomplicate over chiropractic. People are overcomplicated to death. A simple truth, if you have one, if I was a bird and I had one song, it's the chiropractic message. And I get to sing it over and over and over again. I get to change lives every day now like I did 32 years ago. It doesn't get old. It's the truth. So few people have a truth. Most people go to work, they, they get a paycheck, and then they enjoy their paycheck. They enjoy their, their lifestyle. I enjoy the moment that I get to deliver an adjustment or to change somebody's life with this simple Beautiful principle called chiropractic. Thank you for having me here today. I appreciate you. Sharon Gorman.